And here comes the Harriet. around the axis and pushing at the same time, getting that launcher back, the aeroplane tumbling end over end and then gradually falling out of it, he nose down. Are you telling me he's still in control all the way through that? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go again. Not the most powerful aeroplane in the world, pushing up, holding it vertically, holding it on the propeller, pushing in a big foot of rudder, stall turning around the axis of the aeroplane, vertically down, quarter roll to the right, building airspeed as he comes over the bottom of that, and pulling up again. There must be incredible pressures on him at this point. He's going from about plus six times his own weight to minus two. negative flicks where he's been forced out of the cockpit. The only thing that's holding him in under that negative G is a five-point harness. Crash around his waist, strap over each shoulder and one between his legs and he's going to be buckled at his waist and his clothes when he's pushing those maneuvers. And basically, zero gravity is trying to force Canadi out of the aeroplane. Crash on him in the air, smile, the shot to the left, up to Canadi. Lovely. Right, shipping in the North Atlantic and the Arctic Ocean. He said, just flying down the line there. In the Pacific, though, the event is coming down to Japanese. George Bush, former US president, piloted one, was forced to bail out. So please, please, please hang on to balloons, waste paper, RPG 
Gladys, anything that could fly away. Brian Skillicorn has got a good number of hours on this aeroplane. It increase the drag on the aeroplane and it make the engine a bit bigger. But just a look as this aircraft flies by, the New Zealand rugby team were once transported to Auckland, South Island, all of them at once, in the belly of one of these aircraft. below 15,000 feet because they were outturned and could be shot down. enough to clear the Harrier GR the looks like the last run for Angie in the Yak 11 a little bit of a wave <laughs> Six hundred and seventy hours actually on it. Quite a lot of this one and uh, you can't just miss that big Swiss flag on the uh the tail there. And of course that big nose at the front. Yeah. Someone will definitely do some aerobatics for us next year for North Wheels 2000. a little like a jet as it comes down the here and show us next year as well.
I guess when with markets, I mean, when you're when you're flying around the windward, you're not ever too far away from a mountain. Oh, you see, you need all the power you can get, really. There he is. Nice little wave down the line. Oh, that's a good shot. Lenny Mayborn underneath. Working for Western Restoration Team years ago now at Duxford. They were all young lads. Lance, 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 Lance was 15 years old. The youngest, Billy Kelly, was only nine, I think, when he started. Playing hooky from school. And working for a man called Norman Hayes Bailey. Somewhere along the line, a whole basket of bits of Lenin was recovered from the Canadian prairies, along with something like 18 corroded Bristol engines. And over a period of 12 and a half years, the team was well, to lay the anywhere else in the world. Am I right in thinking that this uh, was the first aircraft in the world to be equipped with air-to-air -air radar? I think it had loads and loads of firsts to go with it. It's, um, it's a list that you've got, Richard. <laughs> no good handing it to me. Listen, listen folks. There are very few of these engines actually flying anywhere in the world now. Unlike oh, the, well, that's 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 the Americans use lots and lots of those around. But this is something you are not going to hear every day, and the fight will not be anywhere else. In the world. was acquired for that and uh, it was reactivated. Somebody popped up with a load of ammunition. I think the plan was to fly the aeroplane out over the North Sea, give it a go. Uh, like Reggie Spotted, Golf, Echo Mike, Juliet Alpha and Golf, Bravo Sierra, Pop, Peter. Bravo, rather, Peter. <laughs> I've been working with computers for too long. <laughs> Imagine you're not doing air traffic control today. So, so uh, air traffic and most of the pilots. And here they go. Nice formation takeoff. It's the leader. While they're flying as a two ship, the leader who's responsible for keeping. Make sure you have got a number. Now look at this, pulling up, leader pulls up, number two, they know what they're going to do, they are talking to each other, if you could hear the RT, the leader would be going right, pulling, pulling, go, frequency of their own, which we can't monitor, <laughs> that's probably a very sensible idea, here we are coming in towards you, look at that, two little aeroplanes from 1934, still being flown in the role for which they were designed. This was uh, one of the things that made life a lot easier for design engineers. If you were building an aircraft, you might as well build a biplane because then you could with bracing struts, bracing wires between each wing, and basic number two is the person formating on him. The leader's flying inverted down the line, fully inverted fuel and oil system, so the aeroplane keeps flying quite happily upside down. And the leader positions himself upside down and left his number two. Another balloon. So, 300 horsepower in close formation. A pair of the Tokoka Jungmann.
tell you that. display team, the Blue Eagles. Now, you're going to be taking us through uh, through the display, Mark. What's the first manoeuvre? Okay, the first manoeuvre is what we call a crossover break. The gazelles have just put on the smoke, the lights will come on in a second to say hello, and then we carry out the first manoeuvre, which is a crossover break. Gazelles are around about one row to space in, will just slam the cyclists across and cross over between each other. Positive to negative, positive to you again. Blood's being forced up 
foot into your head and then down into your boots. Especially with maneuvers like that, it's a mark of... <laughs> I've never seen that. I've never, I've never seen anybody do that before, though. reverse a turn for the diamond bend. They now turn towards each other for the 4-5 cross. approaching from your right. Now turn away from you, this time to form a rainbow. Oh, and look, it's an airliner, I think. Isn't it interesting how everybody's painting their aeroplanes in these, uh, these amazingly um, custom colour schemes these days? This is the ATR from. Titan is a local... <laughs> Detail configuration, turboprop, power, which means that it's uh, neighbourhood friendly, not a noisy aeroplane at all. It will also get you in and out of fairly short strips, although it's, a, it's not a long haul aircraft. I don't think. It's a short haul aircraft and it's one of the, uh, the planes that can land and take off in a short enough distance and is quiet enough to be cleared into London City Airport, which if you've ever been there, is a tiny runway in between the old Royal Docks. There we are, that's a notoriously uh, noisy 
configuration normally with most aircraft. Dirty with gear and flaps down. The uh, crew just showing us how friendly this aeroplane is in terms of uh, social responsibility. We've all got to be aware of it. Run towards you and away from you. They're under these competition pilots. Fly in an imaginary box in the sky. Whoever that is, give it a lovely, lovely show to my class. Thank you for the trip. It's Uncle Joe. Thank you. Pushing round, but that's the negative G once again. Held in by the shoulder truck. Push. An open cockpit. Negative G trying to push you out of the aeroplane. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. And if you wear glasses like I do, you can lose them over the middle of Hertfordshire if somebody does it. <laughs> but you are a cubbit. You fly a super cub. Absolutely, which is um, another plane made out of fabric and steel. But with only uh, two wings instead of four. Once again, that five plane can five plane. Two wings. See. And those interplane struts and flying wire bracing the whole thing. So basically you're looking at a flying box and it makes it very strong. Where you're building and designing an aeroplane that is designed to be flown by human pilots who are going to be taught here about it, obviously they're going to make mistakes. They're going to press the aeroplane and something went great. It's a very forgiving aeroplane when it's now look at these slow rolls, that's true. number one, two, or three.
Now then, we were talking earlier about short takeoff and landing aeroplanes, and we opened the show with a the deep flight aeroplane, to the, uh, the short takeoff capability of this aeroplane. Tail up, hasn't gone very far down the main, just uh, crew waving, and that is, it's an obligatory wave slot, this one, ladies and gentlemen, so if you'd like to wave at them, especially those of you down to the right, we're never too cool to wave at all. Craft because it was so slow. And absolutely no one will take it. Pretty manoeuvrable and pretty strong. They called it the string bag. <laughs> because uh, it is. Because it is. But look how uh, there's a big surface area on that wing there. Plenty of lift that you need because torpedo doesn't weigh a little underneath. Essentially, you're carrying that and your crew, all protected by a screen of enemy fighters and e-boats. Swordfish squadrons were scrambled from Manston, and very, very few survived. Heroic action. And another lovely shot. Look at that. The swordfish circling high over the aerodrome and a pair of Spitfires backtracking on the main runway. Here it is, look now, a torpedo run, thank you very much lads, <laughs> directly at the commentary box, just what we need. The two Spitfires, of course, are trying to be over. But the swordfish is totally relying on donations and sponsorship and uh, the not considerable help of British Aerospace to keep these aeroplanes flying. And we're talking about a, a slow run now. Not really into wind either, so you can just see quite how slowly this aeroplane will fly. Flying the engine. No, not yet. They're not waving either. Oh, the there we are, ladies and gentlemen. Now, come on, everybody up to the left. A good old wave. They bring the swordfish by. That's it. Thank you very much. Let's see what Northfield's made of. Come on, there's a man and a cat there who's got his hands firmly planted in his pocket. Yes, you, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Now down to our <laughs> who's wearing an original pair of uh, Demob shorts, round his original pair of Demob legs. It's a family heirloom. What the legs? I won't have that arm. Two large white options. There I go. What about this one? Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, look right in front of you with the smoke on, you'll see the team of 1999 Aerostars coming down in the Vixen Brend. Leading the team, as I said, is the second no captain. pull hard up. You'll see the outside pair working very, very hard. Aerostars five, seven. Thank you. 
been led by Fred Bassett. And uh, like a lot of the pilots here today, these are not professional pilots. at this high level. And you can see Gene hanging on the outside there. They go through the top, looking all around. Basically, Gene has a picture of Gary on his right-hand side, and he's just looking at Gary. So if you do get those six numbers, uh, you could do a lot worse than buy one of these. So if you look straight ahead of you, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the main section coming back in. And he has to pull them up. They great. Maneuver called Russian Roulette. Gary Sharp coming down to the left, crossing over. You get a good idea of the wind out there at the moment. So camera's ready, so they're heading straight in on the center. Ladies and gentlemen, the 1999 Aerostar. Spitfires out there holding. Not the uh, Norman Reed in the desert camouflage aeroplane. It actually is um, painted in water-based space for an easy roll, so he doesn't want to fly into any, any rain. Well, otherwise it's going to be a bit un unpopular. Association for four years, from 89 to 93.
really historic as far as the back of the Le Mans Black Line was today, the Mark 2A, which is the oldest airway oh. this far in the world. Until it's good now. And here we go, let's have a look at that.
the so bear. Copper, then we really follow that by Steve Newton yeah. and the Steve Fury. Yeah. And then <laughs> our friends from France, Cindy Bronco, coupled with the T28 Trojan. Mark Hanna flies a Mustang, and we've got oh, airfield attacks all over the place, and we wind up Mustang, so with right. a pair of people here, Stephen Gray so right. and Ray Hanna. <laughs> the two maestros of fighter collections and the old time. Yeah. Anyway, good afternoon. My name's Paul Brain. I'm the team commentator for Delta Jets, based down at Gurn Campbell in Gloucestershire. And although we're on, according to the program, we're supposed to have been displaying with a nap this afternoon, slight change of plan, we're actually flying a two-ship hunter display for you. So, running in from the left for the first of probably two 360 degrees turns, the Hunter Pair from Delta Jets. And playing with his little um, CAD package, came up with the colour scheme you see in front of yourself. Blue nose. 
Park on Wilt's runway. Obviously, truck traverses weren't really thought of when the Hunter was originally designed, although the first um, jet cross traversal was tested on the Hunter in the very early years. Nice touchdown from um, Dave. Nicely done. I think a lot of people like them too, anyway. It's the worst time. They're still watching on that motorway, don't they? Yeah. I took it when they landed earlier in the summer. And there we go, second shoot. Bit of a firmer landing, but any landing to walk away from is a good one. Steve Nugent in this wonderful example of the Hawker Aviation Arc, one of the most powerful piston engine aircraft ever built. A bottle of shampoo has arrived in the comments. Yeah, that's amazing. Very powerful engine. They're American, really. Very strong air brake. These new guys are showing us the big figures that this aeroplane is capable of. Again, sounding quite different. These aircraft actually um, shot down the big 15 in Korea. Give you an idea of the agility and speed. Steve Nugent, ex uh, Hawk Jock, up the valley. And now left, that's another person flying for Virgin. Better there, uh, but still the fastest in their class. Another Bristol engine. Navy and Marine Corps Tri Service Program. First production was ordered in. Morning, Joe. Let's have a listen and see what this thing sounds like. And following him very closely, John Remain in the T28, fresh from his Spitfire store. Here we go. Very high rate of climb. Straight up. What did you say it was used for? Is it Observation airplane? Observation, forward air control, um, not the... Not a Very good. One of the Breitling fighters, the old flying machine company, Mark Hanna, airborne in that Mustang. And he'll be coming in after we've seen both the Bronco and the T-28 display. Now these guys have done their own briefing. And now look right, ladies and gentlemen. Bernard Caillé brings in an unusual visitor to these shores. Yeah, we tell
Rolls Royce. Took a few of them up to their factory. They came up with that. The P51 is built in most numbers with the Packard built in Berlin. It was the introduction of this aeroplane in all sorts of theatres which made a decisive difference. Huge amount of range. Extraordinarily advanced laminate sound. Sounds quite different to Merlin in a P-51 Mustang. The gun force on the wing sealed up. Shallow index. Yeah, it's dived in. The air whistled through off those gun ports, and that's what that wind is. P51D, the ultimate expression of uh, comfort in the sky as well. Extreme range, excellent firepower. Sorted out. 
Well, my word, Joe. Things shook in here. They certainly did. I think that's extremely effective bomb laying by our two P-40s, don't you? Very good. Excellent. Oh, some delayed action. Yeah, more delayed action. And when the guy doing the pyros gets out of hospital, we're going to thank him very much indeed for all his work. Look at that, that smoke reads, thank you for coming to North Wheels 99 in Arapaho. Somebody's hat just coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a lot more the M4, here on the Bronco. You've been very well today. I think it's been a good one, don't you? The you Hunter Pair. Uh, Spitfire well Duo is quite Simon good. Harris. Simon yeah. Bad Boy Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Gennady Ekman. Who's the political correspondent of... Um, Evgeny... Um, I can't hear you. London right? Tonight. London Bronco, Tonight. So Hunters. If anybody from London tonight is with us on the aerodrome, we've got film, both Polaroid and the Betacam, on oh, Lily.